Hi there Booktube, this is Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and uh, today I've got a bit of a haul for you. So um, some of these are books that have been purchased um, after I was inspired by one of the books I picked up from the library and um, one has come from a publisher and some have come from obviously seeing them on other booktube channels. So start off first of all with a group set of books. Now these are by a lady called Emma Carroll and I um, recently hauled her the Letters from the Lighthouse book and it was phenomenal. It was a five star read for me. These are um, I wouldn't necessarily, I would say a crossover between, yeah, yeah no, I would say they were middle grade, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm in an R ring. So they are quite a light and easy read, and the font size is quite reasonable, um, and they're usually kind of a maximum of sort of, I think this one's the biggest one, and I think that's about 360 pages. So the titles I've managed to pick up from her are Frost Hollow Hall, which I believe is about a young girl who um, is living in a in a hall property that a young lad drowned in the ice, and she falls through um, ice skating and is saved by the ghost of said child. Uh, the girl who walked on air. Now this is one about a girl who is a circus tightrope walker. And um, that's all I know about that one. In Darkling Wood is, I believe, based around 1918 during um, the end of the First World War. And both her and another girl are waiting to find out um, if their brothers are going to return. And Darkling Wood, I believe, has fairies in it. Sorry, itchy nose. Hopefully that's a surprise coming. Uh, a very slight one this one but I'm going to try and save this for Christmas because I think it might be quite nice and atmospheric and that is The Snow Sister um, and I believe this is a young girl who's lost her sister and so makes a snow girl uh, using her dead sister's shawl and then last but not least Strange Star which I believe is um, based in Switzerland and is kind of a ghost story of sorts there's a group of people meet to swap ghost stories and there's a knock on the door and it's a young girl and uh, she's got possibly the scariest story of all so that's all of those and they're all by Emma Carroll uh, as I say I read uh, Letters from the Lighthouse and it was five star I mean I know it was a middle grade book but I am of no way shape or form um, against reading any <laughs> book if it's a good book so there you go the next book that I actually got for myself was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas uh, I know this has been on booktube quite a bit I think I saw this uh, in the background of uh, Mercy's Bookish Musings and also um, Simon at Savage Reads um, I think might have mentioned it on his channel uh, again this is a, a sort of a YA interpretation of the clash of two worlds there's a, um, person, a young girl of colour who sort of crosses the divide between where she lives and where she has her education and she sees, I believe this is the one where she sees an event happen when her best friend is shot um, so I'm really really looking forward to reading that again another one I think I've recently seen on Simon at Savage Reads channel but I may be wrong and that is Good Me Bad Me and uh, I mean what a bling but sort of eerie looking cover now I believe this is a um, that this is the story about a girl whose mum is sent to prison um, for being a serial killer, and so she is um, handed it, she hands her own mother into the police and then is given a new identity and fostered or adopted by a new family, and then obviously. Um, 
there is the question of whether she has similar traits to her mother so that looks really really interesting and this one was a sort of it's it was a two bar thing um it was three for 99p on um amazon so i got these two because i really wanted these two this has been on my list uh but i can't recall much about it so i might have to return to the blurb but i did like the look of the cover and it was um by two roads publishing which i believe again i've heard one of the big booktubers mentioned before as being uh, one of their favorite publishers and it says meet the keeper of lost things anthony Perdue has spent half his life collecting lost objects trying to atone for a promise broken many years before realizing he is running out of time he leaves his house and all its lost tre treasures to his assistant, Laura, the one person he can trust to reunite the thousands of objects with their rightful owners. But the final wishes of the Keeper of Lost Things has unforeseen repercussions which trigger a most serendipitous series of encounters. And like it could be quite interesting. Again, not a too bad a, a read and the, the font size is quite reasonable. So, yeah, I'll give that a go. And last but not least, this one came in the post today. Uh, I couldn't wait. I don't do um, enveloping. <laughs> I get far too excited uh, when I get something received through the post. And this is from uh, a publisher called Joe Fletcher Books, which is part of Quirkus Books. And this is The Crow Garden by Alison Littlewood. Now, she's not an author that I've read before. Uh, Simon at Savage Reads got me into... Sorry, I seem to be plugging Simon at Savage Reads all the way through today. Um, but he got me into Susan Hill uh, last autumn. And what drew me to this book was not only the cover was very sort of Susan Hill-esque, but so was the storyline behind it. So um, I requested it from the publishers and was kindly sent it so thank you very much i will read you the synopsis because as i say i can't remember off the top of my head so this says when nathaniel kerner takes up his new position as a mad doctor at Craigthorn manor the proprietor more interested in phrenology and his growing collection of skulls than his patient's minds hands over the care of his most interesting case Nathaniel finds himself increasingly obsessed with the entrancing Mrs. Halston. Her husband accuses her of hysteria and delusions, but she accuses him of something far more terrible. Is she truly delusional, or is she hiding secrets that should never be uncovered? Ooh. Autumn reading. Perfect autumn reading. So that's all my book haul that I have at the moment. Uh, that book... The Crow Garden is due for release on the 5th of October. Uh, I'll try and get a review onto the um, YouTube as soon as possible. Onto the YouTube. On, onto the channel as soon as possible. Uh, I'm still reading The Last Days of Lena Gray. I did want to actually ask a question out there or put a question out there to you. Um, how many pages do you usually give a book before you decide whether you love or hate it? Um... I'm a bit marmite with this book at the moment and I'll tell you why I'm on page 70 and for the first sort of 50 pages 50 plus pages I found the writing really really dry and brittle and I know that the setting is a bit dry and brittle because it's an old falling apart house on a cliff edge that had been bombed during the war and is slowly working its way off the cliff and it's an old black and white movie star and um, her meetings and liaisons with um, a journalist who comes to visit her but I really wasn't, really, really wasn't getting on with it at all and then it turned to page 61 and this was kind of all written in italics and is basically about her the um, Leader Grey, the actress, and it's her diary or her memoir, or as she calls it, her mirrors. And I started to read it and got myself really interested. 
I, I couldn't really care less about the first 60 pages um, and now I'm starting to read her memoirs I'm interested but my concern is that then terminates at page 112 and I'm wondering if the rest of the book remains as dry and dour as it did in the first half so um, I just wanted to know what you kind of do booktube do you tend to give a book a benefit of the doubt and stick with it or do you go with your initial gut instinct and decide that it's just a little bit too dry and it's not what you um, were hoping it was going to be and you're not getting what you hoped it was going to be I thought this was going to be really kind of creepy and atmospheric and to an extent it is um, but as I say I'm struggling a little bit with the dryness and the, the brittle sort of nature of the writing it doesn't seem to flow for me and um, I'm not invested at all in any of the characters now that I've got into the diary I'm a little bit more interested in the character of Alida Gray um, but my concern is once her memoirs stop which tells the backstory and we then come back to the current day will it return to its dry and brittle nature um, I am going to stick with it for the time being it is a library book however that's due to go back so I do have to make a judgment call at some point uh, but yeah I'd like to know what you do what, what what are your thoughts how many pages do you give a book before you decide it's not for you do you DNF do you not DNF um, I never used to DNF I used to struggle my way through to the bitter end um, when I was a lot younger but now as I'm getting older and there's more more books are plenty out there to read and enjoy I don't see the point in wasting time on a book I'm not enjoying or getting anything from and so yeah uh, like to know your thoughts on that that was the two dogs just about to have a fight behind my head so perfect timing there booktube hope you're all well take care speak to you soon bye for now